Today we're going to be doing a talk over of Unit 8, Part 1, Review. Number one, our learning target first for the first section is I can identify rational and irrational numbers. In the second part, I can demonstrate my understanding of math vocabulary using the words uh, rational, irrational, square root, Pythagorean theorem, lag, and hypotenuse. So those are the vocabulary words we'd like to to use throughout the review and on your assessment. So the first part, number one, says decide whether each number in this list is rational or irrational. Explain or show how you know. So let's talk about rational and irrational numbers first. So rational numbers are rational numbers are any numbers that can be written as a fraction. Some of those examples might be a whole number, like six. Well, any whole number has a one underneath it, so that's a fraction. Another example would be just a fraction, like let's say an uh, improper fraction, like five over two. That would be an example of a rational number. Another one could be a mixed number, three and a half. Because we could convert this into an improper fraction. This would be seven over two, right? So this would work, improper, or a mixed number, but as a rational number. Another one would be a terminating decimal, like two tenths. This would be an example of rational. It could be a repeating decimal. So look, there are eight tenths repeating. Uh, another one would be any square root that has a, for a perfect square. So any square root that's a perfect square would be considered rational. Irrational, on the other hand. Any number that is non repeating and non terminating. So, non terminating means it doesn't ever end. There's no rhyme or reason, they're just numbers that just keep on going. Just going to separate this. A so we can keep that. So some examples of irrational numbers would be like pi, or the square root of any not perfect number. Some of those examples might include if you're looking at the sheet, perfect square sheet that you've been talking about in class. So any, these are all examples of perfect squares. So any number that's not a perfect square. So if we're looking at this, square root of 1 is a perfect square. Per, uh, square root of 4 is a perfect square. It's 2. So any number between, so square root of 2, square root of 3, that would be not perfect. Square root of 5, 6, and 7, and 8 would be not perfect. So any numbers that aren't perfect would be considered an irrational number. Okay, so that's setting us up to be able to answer if these numbers at the top are either rational or not. So the first one is square root of 24. Well, let's look at our sheet. Is square root of 24 a perfect square? Square root of 25 is, and square root of 16 is, it's going to be between it. So no, it's not a perfect square. So we could say irrational. Not perfect. So we're looking for reasons why. Not perfect. I put it as square root. The whole number, negative 24, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, it's still a whole number. You can make that into a fraction. So yes, this would be rational. The square root of 25, that is a perfect square. That equals 5. 5 times 5 is 25. So this would be a rational number. 
this 5 will be taken to a fraction, 5 over 1. 2 and 4 fifths is a mixed number, but we can make that into a improper fraction. So it's 10 plus 4 is 14, so 14 fifths. This is a fraction, so it's rational. 24 hundredths, we can write that as 24 over 100. Yes, that's a fraction, it's a rational. 24 repeating, how we write that as a fraction would be 24 over 99. That's a fraction, it's repeating, that's okay, that's rational. And pi, we know in the example we gave for irrational, pi you put into your calculator, you're gonna get 3.14 into numbers. There's no rhyme or reason to the numbers uh, beyond that. There's no pattern that exists. So this is considered irrational. All right. Number two. It says Amelia's younger brother told her that 5 over 2 is equal to the square root of 6. Amelia knows that this cannot be right because 5 over 2 is rational. It is because it's a fraction. And square root of 6 is irrational. That's true as well. But we need to prove it. So writing the explanation that Amelia could use to convince her brother that 5 over 2 cannot be the square root of 6. So what we're going to do for this one, we're going to just put this example. So if we said if, we're just going to try proving them wrong, 5 over 2 equals the square root of 6, then we can square each side and they should be equal to each other. So to prove that would be 5 over 2 times 5 over 2 has to equal 6. Well, 5 times 5 is 25. 2 times 2 is 4. Does 25 over 4 equal 6? No, it equals 6 and a quarter. Does that equal 6? No. So we just prove it. Number three. Number three, we have to indicate whether the result will be rational or irrational. So let's solve these. So we have the square root of seven. The square root of seven is an irrational number. Plus the square root of nine. Well, the square root of nine is three. And if you want to do your sheet, you can find nine is a perfect square. Square root of nine equals three. So if we add a whole number of three to an irrational number, a bunch of numbers that have no pattern, is that going to change? Is this overall going to be a rational number when we combine those? No, they're not. So this is still going to be irrational. B, 20 minus 5 is 15. Square root of 15. So we look at our sheet. Is 15 a perfect square? It falls between 9 and 16. So no, it is not a perfect square, so it's going to be irrational. C, we have the square root of 81 divided by 3. If you notice, the square root is just over the 81. It's not including the divided by 3. So we got to do this first. The square root of 81 is 9, and we have to divide by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3, so this one is rational. It's a whole number. It's Put a whole number over one. D. So when we're multiplying, we're just going to multiply our two numbers inside the square roots. So three times three is nine, and we still have the square root. The square root of nine, we can look on our sheet. The square root of nine is three. So the answer is going to be three. Three is a whole number, so it's rational. Moving on to the back or the next page. So in our next section, our learning target is I can approximate the value of an irrational number. Use the diagram below to answer the following questions. So for, and show and explain your work. So in letter A, it says, what is the exact length of this segment showing? So in order to do that, I want to zoom in. I want to create a right triangle. And so I want to use the grid lines that we have. So we have this width, 
this side length is 2, this is 1, 2. And our length here would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And let's look at this. This forms a 90 degree angle. So cross limit would be our hypotenuse, which would be our C. Now, while we're at it, we should, we're going to be using our Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let's identify our A and B. They are interchangeable. You can use it in any order. I'm just going to pick A as 2, my smaller number, and B as 8, my next smallest number. But you don't have to do it that order. The main one is that you C is going to be the largest number which we don't know right now. That's what we're going to try to solve. So we're going to use that to help us solve letter A. So we're going to go use our formula A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm going to fill in my A. I said my A is 2, so it's going to be 2 squared plus, we know our B is 8, 8 squared, and we don't know C, so it's still going to be C squared. All right, so let's do our math in this part. 2 squared. It's four plus eight squared. If you don't know how to, if you don't have these memorized, you use your chart. Find eight squared. Eight squared is sixty-four. And we still don't know c squared. We're going to add four and sixty-four, so we get sixty-eight equals c squared. I want c alone, so I want to take the square root, which we cancel up. Get rid of. When you take the square root of the square, it goes away. So we have c now. When I do the one side, I do the other. Now. So it's going to be square root of 68. So let's just see if a square root of 68 is a perfect square. A square root of 68 is not. It falls between 64 and 81. So we're just the most exact answer we can get is square root of 68. We were just as that. If they were asking us for an estimate, that's where we'll, we would find whole numbers or try to estimate the best I can get. So in letter B, we'll, we'll go on there. It says estimate by indicating the two whole numbers that result above us between. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make three square root brackets. I'm going to put 68 in the middle. So what I'm going to do is try to find perfect squares that one perfect square that's smaller and one perfect square that's larger. So on our sheet, 68 would fall between 64 and 81. So my smaller square perfect square is 64, my larger is 81. So I'm going to put 64 and 81. The square root of 64 is 8. The square root of 81 is 9. So our answer is going to fall between 8 and 9. We're not asking you to find any decimals. We're just asking what are, which two whole numbers would it be between. So our answer is between 8 and 9. Number 5. It says plot these numbers on a number line. So we have these four numbers, and we have to put them on our number line. So they're all square roots, and they go from smallest to largest. So it's going to go in this, this order on our number line. We just got to decide where they're going to go. So square root of 3. So I'm going to use my chart. Square root of 3 is going to fall between square root of 1 and square root of 4. It's going to be close to 4, not quite 4. We know the square root of 4 is 2, so we know it's going to be less than 2, but pretty close to it. So I'm going to say it's about 1.9. So I'm going to put about, that's what these little wavy signs are, about 1.9. And I'm going to put that on our chart. 1.9 would fall right about here, but 1.9 square root of 3. Moving on to the square root of 9. We need a new chart. Square root of 9 is 3. The whole number 3. So I'm just going to put 3. And I'm going to put bottom of 3, I'm going to put square root of 9. Square root of 17. Square root of 17 is going to be just after the square root of 16. So it's in between 16 and 25. But it's really close to 16, so it's going to be just over 4. So I want to say 4.1. So I want to say about 4.1. So in here, 4.1 will be about here. Put 4.1, so I know that this will be square root of 17. Am 
my last one, the square root of 23, look at our chart. 23 is between 16 and 25. It's closer to 25. So it's, and we know it's less than 5. I'd say 4.8-ish, right around there. So about 4.8 for the square root. So 4.8 will be about here. 4.8 below, the square root of 23 would work. That's how we identify where it would be on a number line. Number six, what two whole numbers does square root of 42 fall between? So just like we did in letter B in number four, so I want to make three square root brackets, put 42 in the middle, look at our chart, 42 falls in between the square root of 36 and the square root of 49, so my smaller one is square root of 36, my larger one is 49, square root of 49. The square root of 36 comes out to 6, the square root of 49 comes out to 7, so our answer is going to fall between 6 and 7. Let's flip it over to the last side. So in our last one, it says we need to prove whether or not a triangle with these side lengths listed is a right triangle. Show your work and be able to explain your reasoning for each of the problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem for each one of these. So we're going to have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then I need to identify which one's a, b, and c. So we have two whole numbers and one square root number, square root of 16, or 116. So I need to find out oh, which one, my most important letter I need to find is my C, my hypotenuse. And it has to be the largest number of the three. So I need to see if, if 10 is bigger or bigger than the square root of 116. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find 116 on our chart, the square root of 116. So 116 is going to fall between the square root of 100 and 121. Well, 10 squared is 100. So we know that the square root of 116 has to be bigger than 10. So when we're looking at this, the square root of 116 has to be our C. I want to say our smallest is going to be our A, and then our next smallest is B. So I'm going to use the, that. So I'm going to put A squared be 4 squared plus B, 10 squared, equals the square root 116 is all squared. 4 squared is 16. 10 squared is 100. The square root of 116 squared, when you square the square root, they just go away, so it's 116. 100 plus 16 is 116. So 116 equals 116. We just proved this works. So yes, it is a right triangle. There are going to be examples on here that are known, it doesn't work out, where the two numbers listed at the very end don't equal each other. Our next one, the square root of 11, the square root of 15, and 5. So we know that right now, the square root of 11 is the smallest, looking at these two, because 11 is smaller than 15. We've got to find out where 5 is going to fall into. So if we look at 5 on our sheet, 5 squared would be 25. So that's where, if we're we brought 5 into this, we should know that 5 is going to be our largest number in this. A, uh, A will be square root of 11, it's our smallest, and the next biggest will be square root of 15. So I'm going to use A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we have square root of 11 plus square root of 15 equals 5 squared, and we square all these, so it's a square root of 11 squared plus the square root of 15 squared equals 5 squared. So when we square a square root, they go away, so it's just 11, same thing here, when we square a square root, it becomes 15, 5 squared is 25, 11 plus 15 is 26. 26 does not equal 25, so this answer is not a right triangle. Our 
next one, 9, 12, and 15, they're all whole numbers. And we know that 9 is our smallest, 12 is our next, 15 is our largest. So we can use a squared plus b squared plus c squared, 9 squared plus 12 squared equals 15 squared. If you want to use your chart to figure these out, if you don't know them, 9 squared, so 9 times 9 is 81. 12 squared is 144. Equals 15 squared is 225. 81 plus 144 is 225. So 225 equals 225. Yep. Letter C works. So it is a right triangle. And our last one, D, still using the Pythagorean theorem. They're all in square roots, so our smallest number I would say is A, which is the square root of 2. B will be the square root of 8, and C will be our square root of 10. So I'm going to write these out, A squared plus B squared plus C squared. The square root of 2 squared, the square root plus the square root of 8 squared equals the square root of 10. Square. Whenever we square a square root, the square root symbol goes away. So this becomes 2, this becomes 8, and this becomes 10. 2 plus 8 is 10. 10 equals 10. Yes, it is a, uh, it is a right triangle. And the last two problems are, deals with our learning target. I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find an unknown side of the measure. So we're looking at our ladder problem here. We need to show our work and write what is the exact length of the unknown. All right, so if your sheet is hard to see, there's going to be a wall here. It says a foot of a ladder is placed three feet from the wall. So if you want to draw in. Something that looks like this. This is going to be a right angle. So the foot of the ladder is 3 feet away from the wall. If the ladder is 12 feet long, the other hypotenuse, how high will the ladder reach off the wall? So we want to know this height, this distance right here. This will be our B. 3 will be our A, and 12 will be our C. So I'm using the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared. C squared. Let's make this a little bit better. So 3 squared plus, we don't know B, so we'll just keep it a B squared. And we know C is 12, so 12 squared. 3 squared is 9 plus B squared equals 12 squared is 144. I need to get B all by itself, so I'm going to subtract 9 first. When I do it on one side, do it the other. 9 becomes 0. So we have b squared equals 144 minus 9 is 136. And the last step is I want to get b alone. I need to get rid of the square, so I have to take the square root. When I do it on one side, I do the other. So the square root of b squared is just b. And then the square root of 136, we look at our sheet here, see if it's a, a perfect square. The square root of 136 would fall between 121, the square root of 121 and the square root of 144. It is not a perfect square. So we're just going to keep our answer as the square root of 136. This is the most exact answer you can get when you say feet when you're talking about distance. Don't go any further than that. And our last problem find the unknown measure. It's a right triangle. We need to find C. So I want to say 8 is A, 12 is B, and we'll find C. So we have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 8 is A, so 8 squared. B is 12, so 12 squared equals C squared. We don't know what C yet. So 8 squared, 8 times 8, 64. 12 squared is 144. C squared. Don't be afraid to use your sheet. 12 squared, you don't have that memorized, is 144. 
144. 64 and 144 is 208 equals c squared. My last step is I need to get c all alone. I need to get rid of that square, so I take the square root. I'm going to do it to one side, I'm going to do it to the other. The square root of c squared is just c. We look to see if 208 is a perfect square. 208 would be in between 196 and 225. It is not a perfect square, so we just keep our answer as a square root of 208. Clear name. And if you want to put units, you can, but there's no units in this problem. That wraps up our review. Good luck. <laughs>